message and yet have some thought-provoking material in it, not only for kids, but for parents as well. In Proverbs chapter number 22 and verse number 6, the Bible says, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. I think that probably pretty much anybody who has been around the Bible any length of time at all has heard this particular verse brought up. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old he will not depart from it. I first of all want to admit that I don't fully understand this verse. My dilemma comes in the part, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old he won't depart. That dilemma is born by what I have observed many times in church circles where at least it looks to me like parents have done their best trying to train their children, trying to rear them in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, if I can borrow from Ephesians and Paul's writings. And yet, how many times have you seen and how many times have I seen that kids get away from the Lord when they get away from home many times, it seems to me. And so I don't fully understand, I don't fully get, I don't quite get, I guess I might be able to say. However, I want to hurriedly state this, I believe the verse. There are many things in the Bible that I don't fully understand, but I believe it because God says it. It's God's Word. Now, what God says is train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Now, the, the flaw, if there is a flaw, is not with God's Word. You can depend on God's Word. It's holy, it's inspired, it's infallible. If there is a flaw, it is in the participants administrating the Word of God. I do believe this verse is true. And I do believe that consequently it should be an encouragement to parents. I realize that you can do the best you know how. But ultimately, that decision has to come up to the child's own heart and own mind. I fully believe that. I furthermore, as I think on this verse, have to say that I've seen in some cases kids reared in what were, I would consider, not so great circumstances. Not so much in the vein of the historic Judeo-Christian ethic, and yet I have seen those kids turn out just wonderful servants of the Lord. It kind of goes along with the thought that on the other side of the fence I've seen kids reared in church who got away from the Lord. But I do not see the whole picture this side of heaven. I only see part of it. And I have to admit that what I see is loaded with frailty. It's loaded with imperfections. God sees perfectly. And I am more than happy to leave it up to the Lord and not leave it up to David Burkholder. I do believe the verse. 
It has been a great comfort to me in the rearing of our son Paul, in the rearing of our granddaughters. And of course, we don't rear them. Their parents do. Um, we just get as much in edgewise as we possibly can. Uh, not really. We try not to interfere. But I do think that probably everyone has at times had a certain kind of question about this verse. Let me assure you, the fault is not with the Word of God. Now the fault might be with me. The fault might be with the child. But the fault is not with the Word of God. You can have confidence in God's Holy Word. It is always right. I am reminded when Paul was shipwrecked there on his way to Rome. And on that shipwreck, you've heard me bring a message on the experts are not always right. The experts said, let's go on, even though the time was getting late in the year when the storms were going to be coming on. The experts said, we can do it. The experts are not always right, the shipwrecked anyway. The majority is not always right. The more part in that shipwreck advised for them to go on. The majority is not always right. The ship wrecked anyway. And then the, the people who are supposed to be the uh, ones who are well versed and knowing what the score is in doing these things are not always right because the ship wrecked anyway. However, the Apostle Paul at the end of the shipwreck gave us a kind of insight into what is always right when he said, I believe the Word of God. You can trust God's Word. We can't trust ourselves. I'll readily admit that. We have difficulty trusting other people even at times. Try to keep in mind, they too are frail human beings. But you can always trust God and His Word. I hope that might be a great comfort to you. Ultimately, in this thought, it is this. Ultimately, it is the person that makes the difference. We try our best. We should obviously, as parents, endeavor to do as God would have us to do. But ultimately, that decision has to be up to the child. There can be no doubt about that. And again, I have a passage from the Bible. But Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Ultimately, with every one of us here, parent, adult, child, whatever the case may be, ultimately, with every one of us here, the decision is up to the individual. Don't blame it on to your parents and how you were reared. Don't blame it on to your environment. Don't blame it on to, oh, if I'd had a better pastor or if I'd had a better church. Ultimately, the decision is up to the individual. God is there for you if you make yourself available to Him. I do want to say this. That as this dilemma of the verse comes to my mind, again, I am not the judge. I do not see all. 
I do not see the bigger picture. I only get a glimpse into some of the outlines as it were. But God sees everything and God says train up a child in the way he should go and when he is old he will not depart therefrom. Along those lines let me give this thought. As you all know, I believe in deathbed conversions. I believe at the very end, a person having heard of Christ and never accepted Christ can come to that point where they do accept Jesus Christ as their Savior. The thief on the cross is an example of that. Not only do I believe in deathbed conversions, but I believe in deathbed rededications to the Lord. I have heard it said that at death, every mask is removed. And I believe in the possibility Maybe, could I say even probability of the one who has been trained in the way of God coming down to that last moment of life on earth face to face with God. All the charades are gone. All the costumes are gone. It's coming down to reality. So not only do I believe in deathbed conversions, but I believe in deathbed rededications to the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, when I say this, I want to give another side to it just a moment. I do believe in the worth of this verse. In other words, parents take heart. Train up a child in the way he should go. I'll say more about the ability and inability in a moment. But you can take heart. The Bible does say, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, it's going to come back to him. One way or the other, it's going to come back to him. I think I have personal illustrations of that in my own family. I'm sure you could give those illustrations of that in your own family as well. But here is one big point I want to make before I go further into the message. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old he will not depart from that way. In analyzing this verse, as I was thinking about it all week long, the thought came to me of the eternal security of the believer. That's one reason why I like to see people come to Christ at an early age. Generally, their hearts are more tender toward the things of God. Generally, they're not all cluttered up and clouded up with the ifs and the buts of scientific theory and so on and so forth. And there is, in the Bible, the reality of that, what? Childlike faith except ye become as little children. Now listen, when a little child comes to Christ in sincerity and in truth and gets saved, he's not going to depart from that salvation in Jesus Christ. You say, Brother Burkholder, what if he backslides? Well, what if you backslide? You know, I believe in the eternal security of the believer. I'm going to tell you why. Because we do backslide. If it were up to us to keep us, we'd have lost it a long time ago. We're saved by grace and we're kept by grace. And in an ultimate analysis, I should like to say 
that I believe parents who bring their kids to church and those kids hear the gospel and those little kids' hearts are touched and they come to Jesus Christ as their Savior. Some of them, even on their own, they, some go forward in church and receive the Lord. Praise God for it. Some get saved at home at the family altar. I think some children in the quietness of the night's darkness get down beside their bed and pray and ask the Lord Jesus to come into their heart and be their Savior. Whatever the case, there might be a lot of different scenarios, but there's one salvation and one Lord and one baptism being put into the body of Christ by the Holy Spirit of God. And once you become a child of God, you're His property and you're not departing from it when you get old. Now, he may have to give you a few spankings along the way. He may even get to the point where he said, Say you, uh, I'm sorry, but you're coming home early. But I can assure you of this, no matter. Either way, train up a child in the way he should go. That child gets saved, you're going to see that child in heaven one of these days. Because salvation is according to the shed blood of Jesus Christ, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy, He saved us by the washing of regeneration. Uh, that's not the water up here in the baptistry tank. That washing of regeneration is the application of the shed blood of Jesus Christ, our wonderful Lord and Savior to our hearts. I, I tell you, brothers and sisters, when the blood is applied, the soul is catapulted, as it were, into the heavenly glories automatically. You're not only saved, but you're safe. When he is old, he's not going to depart from it. God's going to see to that. Well, I know that's probably a strange application to some of you, but that hit me this week and it was a real blessing to my heart. Because how many parents have I known who have had heartache over what their children did later on in life? And yet they remember that day when as a child, that child made profession of faith in Jesus Christ. i got to tell you, if that profession of faith were real, and I think many times they are real, we don't give them credit for knowing what they're doing enough, I tell you, they're going to be with the Lord Jesus in heaven. It's kind of like old Lot. You remember old Lot? None of us would have considered him a, a number one church member. Most of us wouldn't have wanted him to join our churches, as a matter of fact. But in Second Peter it says, That just man vexed his righteous soul. Lot was one of those who was brought up in the way that he should go by Uncle Abraham. And when he was old, I think God took him to heaven. Well, I want to go on to the next part of this. Train up a child. Not beat up a child in the way he should go. Right? I mean, normally you'd think most people had enough sense to realize that, but boy, we're living in funny days. And uh, we are to train up a child in the way she go. Now, that does include uh, a spanking sometimes. That does include a, a little, a yes, a slap on the hand. I guess the welfare people are going to get me now. Uh, praise the Lord. But uh, I got to tell you, uh, back to those sheets my mother hung up on the line. I know by this time some of you are saying, Brother Burkholder, you're hung up on those sheets. <laughs> I got to tell you, I was nearly strung up on them. <laughs> you know, the ones I got the bright idea to take my little shovel and throw dirt all over them on the line when they were wet after my mother just washed them. And mother didn't come out and say, oh, 
he was expressing himself. <laughs> oh, wasn't that cute? <laughs> I could tell when the door slammed. Mother wasn't coming after me to give me a cookie. You want to know why I never threw dirt on those sheets anymore? I'll tell you why. Because I remembered the sting of the spanking. <laughs> and no, it didn't make me hate my mom because of it. Because I finally got mature enough to where I realized mother was trying to train me and not hurt me. I believe that we need to train kids in the way they should go. Now sometimes the rod and reproof, right? Give correction. But a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. I'm kind of reminded in a way, how many of you guys have seen those nice beautiful plants at the florist where they take azalea bushes and braid the trunk of them? Have you seen those? Isn't that amazing how that just grew that way? They were trained that way. And everybody thinks they're so beautiful and wonderful. And if you don't keep after them, they'll go back wild growing. Now, the Bible says train up a child in the way he should go. It's just not negative. It's just not don't do that. But it is, do, do this. In fact, it says, train up a child in the way he should go. And I believe that this signifies a child does not come trained. As Lester Roloff used to say, they don't come trained. You have to train them. Hopefully you'll do so in the wisdom of God. I think this also signifies parental responsibility. I don't think God left the training of children to the government. I think it's going that direction in the day we live. But I don't think that's the case at all. And I, I, I think because of the way society is going as a whole, the government sometimes has to step in and do some things. But basically, training children is up to the parents. God set up the home. And parents need to take that training of children upon themselves. It is the parental responsibility. Parents, do your kids a favor and train them in the manners and mannerisms of the historic Judeo-Christian ethic. I believe that it is a parental responsibility. Now, here's where I want to say this. No trainer is perfect. How many parents here have often sat down and asked themselves, where have I failed? Well, there's probably a zillion ways. I remember when Paul was born. I've told you before. I think I prayed every day for the Lord to overrule the mess that I made and that the Lord might rear Paul for himself. I realized that he needed to be spanked sometimes. And I told his mother. <laughs> but I want to say this. As parents, hey, come on. We know we're not perfect. Kids, cut your parents some slack. They know they're not perfect. But a lot of you parents out there love you kids. Your kids. And you want the best for them. I know I wanted the best for Paul. In fact, growing up, I thought I had it pretty good. I wanted it better for Paul. Now, I grew up in a minister's home. And I thought I had it pretty good. I wanted it better for Paul. That doesn't mean I wanted him trained in growing up outside of a minister's home. To me, that meant I wanted more of the ministry in Paul. 
more of Christ, more love out of Paul to Christ, more of Christ in my son, Paul. Parents, we realize we're not perfect. But you have a good promise in James 1.5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Who giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not. And it shall be given him. I want to encourage parents here today. Every day pray and ask God for wisdom. Even as your kids get older, they're still your kids. Pray and ask God for wisdom. I mean, even when they're out of the house and on their own, and you do want them to be developed and mature, and even though, oh, I want my granddaughters to stay sweet and little, it'd be a real shame if they didn't grow older and have their own lives, right? I want that. But I got to tell you, even now, I pray for me to have wisdom and guidance to my son and his wife, even as we are grandparents to our granddaughters. Because grandparents have a part in the rearing of the kids, positively or negatively. And I think it is good for us to pray and ask God for wisdom. Of course, if you're going to be a good parent, you're first of all going to have to be what? Saved. That's the very first thing. If you want God's help, you need to know Jesus Christ is your Savior. And it's like this. The Lord Jesus died on the cross for your sin. He wants you to be saved. He wants you in the household of faith. He wants the Holy Spirit of God indwelling you. Oh my goodness, what a benefit and what a right you have. Talk about the rights people have in the government circles today. I'll tell you one of your rights. It's to get saved. Because Jesus is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And so we have this wonderful thought here. Parent, get saved. Serve the Lord. Be an example. And train up the child in the way he should go. I mentioned rod and reproof a moment ago. The rod, of course, is the thing that causes the little bit of pain. Reproof is the explanation for it. I think parents need to take time with their children to explain the why and the wherefore. There are some things kids have to have so many years on them before they're going to begin to understand. And there are some things you're going to shield them from even though they don't understand why. You go ahead. You're the parent. You're not just their friend, although I would hope you would be a friend. But you're the parent. Do some parenting. Do parenting under the guidance of God Almighty. And then quickly, hurriedly, the third part here, the way they should go. Train up a child in the way he should go. Different people might have different ideas about the way that a child should go. I want to bring the way. And you already know what I'm going to say. John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way. The truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So parents, I want to say the first thing you need to want for your children, I believe, is for their salvation. I tell you what, one thing matters after it's all said and done, and that's whether or not you're going to see your kid in heaven. Uh, pardon me, your child in heaven. There's more to it than that, though. Teach them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Right? Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Train up a child in the way he should go. That way is Jesus Christ our Lord. Get in the Bible. Folks, you can trust the Bible. 
In fact, don't settle for anything less than the Word of God. When you go to church and you take your families and your children to church with you, don't settle for just a little bit of entertainment or a little bit of feel-good illustration and joking and so on and so forth. Don't settle for a little bit of fellowship. No, 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 no. Insist upon the Word of God. Insist upon the worship of God in singing and in tithes and in offerings and in praying. But whatever you do, insist upon the way of the Lord and that it be from the Holy Bible. What we need in our country, what we need in our churches is the young generation coming up who's tired of all of the fluff going on in religion today and wants to get back to the pure, holy, wonderful, immaculate, indispensable, indescribable Word of God, both incarnate and written. Shall we stand with our heads bowed and eyes closed? If you're here and not saved, I'd like to invite you to come meet me down here at the front or take a position at the door over to my right. And counselor can come and show you out of the Bible how to be saved. If you're here today and you are saved, but maybe you need to come to the altar and pray for grace as a parent to rear your kid in the way Jesus Christ would have them to go. Or maybe you're here and you're a child and you want to pray, oh God, help me to follow thy way. I pray thee, Lord God, give my parents wisdom and guidance from thee as they help me. I know not the need. God knoweth. I think the individual knoweth by, via, by way of the conscience, by the way. If you need to come, I invite you to come. Our Father in heaven, I thank you so much for this service today. I pray thee, O God Almighty, that thou wouldst Exalt thyself as indeed the pure, holy, infallible God and thy word as indeed faithful and true from the beginning and through the ending. Oh God, how my heart rejoices in that we're not here on our own. We're not put here and then left to fend for ourselves. We have thee to turn to. We have thee to go to. We have thee as our divine comforter, as our leader, as our God, as our guide, as our glorious Savior, and as our blessed hope. I pray thee, O God, have thy will and way on this invitation in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, one, 157 in the book if you'd like to sing along.